Hello and welcome back. Today is lecture 1-2 on block diagrams, Mason's gain rule, and model matching. The objectives of today's lecture are to create a block diagram from the equations that describe a control system, to derive the transfer function for a system given the block diagram, to use Mason's gain rule to find the transfer function for a single signal flow diagram, and to use model matching to design a controller to yield a closed loop transfer function. Some of the theory we've already discussed in lecture 1-1, so recall that block diagrams and transfer functions can be used to represent the input and output relationship of a control system. An alternate representation is a signal flow graph or signal flow diagram. A signal flow graph has branches and nodes. The arrows show, show the direction of signal flow, and the transmittance or transfer function is written over the directed branch. All of the branches into a node are summed. Figures 1 and 2 below show the block diagram and signal flow graph for a feedback control system. So here in figure 1, we have a block diagram that's very similar to what we saw in the last lecture where we have the input x of s, the output y of s, and we have the transfer functions or transmittances. So over here, we still have the input x and the output y, but now we have transmittances along these arrows. So here, for example, where we had h5 of s, we put h5, and where we had h1 of s, we put h1. So let's look at a summing block. So here where we have a summer, before we would have a plus and minus, that means we would have h1 minus h4. Now we denote the subtraction by putting a minus sign on the h4. Because the summer is just a plus and a plus if you think about the one before. So it shows subtraction, you have to put the minus sign on the arrow. Same at the next summer, we have a positive h5 and a positive h2. So here we just have the transmittances going into the summer. And similarly, we have that here. So now let's review Mason's gain rule, which you probably also studied in ECE 205, and talk about how to get the transfer function from a signal flow graph. In order to find the transfer function for a signal flow graph, we use Mason's gain rule, where it is h of s is equal to p1 delta 1 plus p2 delta 2 plus and so on over delta. A path p sub i is any succession of branches from input to output in the direction of the arrows with no node pass more than once. A path gain is the product of the transfer functions comprising the path. For figure two, an example of a path would be h1, h2, h3. Another example of a path would be h5, h3. Both of those give direct paths from the input to the output. A loop is any closed succession of branches in the direction of the arrows, which does not pass any node more than once. The loop gain is the product of the transfer functions comprising the loop. For figure two, an example of a loop would be h2, h3 times negative h4. So we can write that as negative h2, h3, h4. The loops are touching if they have any node in common. The path and loop are touching if they have any node in common. So for the signal flow graph we have here, the loop h2, h3, and h4 actually shares a node with both of the paths we defined at either the first or the second node. So in this case, we would say that all paths and loops are touching. The determinant delta of a signal flow graph is computed by delta is equal to 1 minus the sum of all the loop gains plus the sum of all products of gains of all combinations of two non-touching loops minus the sum of products of gains of all combinations of three non-touching loops and so on. The, co the cofactor of a path delta i is the determinant of the signal flow graph formed by deleting all loops touching the path. To get the cofactor for each path, 
write out the determinant and cross off all loops touching that particular path. In class activity one, derive the transfer function for the system block diagram in figure one. Then use Mason's gain rule to find the system transfer function for the signal flow graph in figure two. So first for figure one, we're going to label the outputs of the summers. So I'm going to label this output E. And we'll label the output of this summer F. So equation E is equal to X H1 minus Y H4. We're going to lose the S in the parentheses just for efficiency sake. And F is equal to E H2 plus X HF. We're going to label equation E1 and equation F2 and we're going to substitute equation one into equation two. So F is equal to the quantity XH1 minus YH4 times H2 plus XH5. And we're going to label this equation three. Equation four is going to be the output of the entire block diagram, y. y is equal to f h3. Next, we're going to substitute equation three into equation four. So y is equal to the quantity x h1 minus y h4 times h2 plus x h5 times h3. When we simplify this equation, we get y is equal to x h1 h2 h3 minus y, h2, h3, h4, plus x, h3, h5. We move all the terms that include a y to the left side of the equation, and we get y times the quantity one plus h2, h3, h4, equals x, times the quantity H1, H2, H3 plus H3, H5. So the transfer function T of S equals Y of S over X of S would equal in the numerator H1, H2, H3 plus H3, H5 over, in the denominator, one plus H2, H3, and H4. So now let's use Mason's gain rule to simplify this signal flow graph. So the first thing we're going to do is identify the paths. Path one is equal to H1, H2, H3. Path two is equal to H3, H5. Loop one is equal to negative H2, H3, H4. And that's actually the only loop we have. So the determinant is equal to one minus loop one, or one plus H2, H3, H4. Delta one is equal to the determinant where you erase all of the loops that touch path one. So the determinant is one, 
but H2, H3, H4 actually touches path one, so it's just a one. And delta two is equal to one, and once again, the loop H2, H3, H4 touches path two, so delta two is also just a one. So T of S is equal to P1 delta one plus P2 delta two over delta. So T of S is equal to H1, H2, H3 plus H3, H5 over one plus H2, H3, H4. And notice that the signal flow graph and the block diagram represented the same system. So in this case, you get the same transfer function using both methods.